um, facilitation role and landlord role as well. So I'd like to share with you some uh, of this experience uh, working on these projects and some of my views on what value they bring, what the challenges are and what are the opportunities for this field in the future. So uh, when we talk about uh, mean while use, the description that we have my understanding of it is the intelligent use of unproductive empty buildings in underused land. And this is really to say that empty properties are detrimental to vitality and the um, um, of our town centres and cities and are a wasted resource that we simply cannot let idle. Uh, the goal is to ultimately make better spaces through using neglected and unviable space into positive and productive use, creating opportunities for the local community and for local enterprises. So um, who do these, these uses cater for, uh, really? Um, they provide for demand that the standard commercial office space market does not address. They provide people that are financially excluded <coughs> from accessing space with the chance to start and grow their creative or social enterprise. So we're kind of all um, quite uh, knowledgeable about the very popular call of co-working spaces such as WeWork, uh, which cater for a lot of kind of clean tech businesses and we find them heavily concentrated in the city of London. Um, but it's not all about graphic designers and app developers. People also want to make a bit of a mess and need a larger space to kind of let their creativity flourish. Uh, and it's also important to get the right mix of spaces and encourage co-location of different types and different sizes of businesses in one space to increase opportunities for collaboration, peer learning, and for people to find new avenues to grow their businesses and thrive. So the right mix of spaces is quite important. Um, and as creators are being priced out of central London, underused buildings and land in outer London towns becomes an incredibly valuable resource support local enterprise. So how do projects start? Um, in my experience working on, on temporary projects um, for meanwhile space, projects kick off when landlords approach uh, with a particular asset in mind, uh, which has become vacant or underused, and is costing resources to uh, in relation to maintenance, business rates, and security. And depending on the type of landlord, uh, if it's a private landlord or a public landlord, uh, there is a small capital contribution to refurbish the space or a grant funding which is attached or required to deliver social and economic outputs uh, through the use of the space. So the meanwhile use happens kind of in between after a failed previous use uh, and before a long-term solution for the property has been developed. This is an example of a project in Wembley where a uh, disused 1960s office block was offered by the private owner uh, for an interim period of time while a redevelopment was being negotiated and the space offered low cost uh, space, office, primarily office space and larger studio spaces for various creatives, uh, small entrepreneurs as well as uh, youth clubs and charities uh, alongside a program of events, exhibitions and activities for the local community. Uh, the project lasted for about a year um, and uh, before it uh, received planning for a tall residential building which is currently in construction. Um, I've also been involved in a, a kind of a different setup where um, Power Capsule commissioned meanwhile space to um, help tackle high street vacancy rates and uh, high street vitality and we were asked to find empty vacant or underused shops on the high street negotiate a peppercorn lease with the landlords and uh, open, refurbish the space and open it up to um, <coughs> to offer it to local people who want to test an idea or use a space to kind of start their business rent free. And uh, it was for people who wouldn't normally have the resources to uh, take on a space like that themselves. Um, so we were able through that program uh, in two years to negotiate leases on three high street shops and uh, open up a disused library building as well. We carried a lot of local engagement to reach out to uh, potential users and we ran seven rounds of idea workshops challenging participants to develop their proposals and ideas before they go into the space. And um, 
as much as it was successful in engaging with startups and finding those people who need a little bit of a push to start thinking about their ideas and develop their business more, it lacked the capacity to really impact the vitality of the high street uh, on a more a larger scale. And we've all seen these headlines about the failing high street uh, affected by growth in online retailing and the changing um, culture of shopping and the changing expectations of customers. But we also know that high streets are significant places of employment and important for social interaction locally. And uh, the district, <laughs> district structure of the high street, um, I think, allows for a variety of users to co-locate. And I believe there is an opportunity that um, we can make use of existing assets on high streets to make um, spaces for uh, employment and to uh, create more inclusive and better places to visit and work in. And how do we do that? Um, I tried to demonstrate it with an example uh, from another project uh, called Central Crane in Walthamstow, which I uh, happen to be involved in uh, from an operator perspective and then as well as from the local council's perspective um, overseeing it still. So the Walthamstow Town Centre is the largest town centre in Waltham Forest. Uh, it's located in the centre of the borough with excellent transport links and a thriving market and a high street. And it's a very important um, hub of activity for the borough, providing homes, employment, retail services and uh, leisure opportunities to its empty, diverse community. Community. And in that um, context, the Central Parade building is located on the corner of the kind of the two main shopping streets, uh, the High Street here and Ho Street here, um, minutes away from Walthamstow uh, Station, and as such, a kind of a very prominent spot in the town centre. It's uh, a council old building, it was designed by the Borough Surveyor in 1954 and it was later opened in 1958. And what's interesting about its history is that it was kept entirely um, in-house in by the local authority. Um, the building comprised um, a parade of shops, a former bank and a public hall on the ground floor with offices and flats above. And for its time, it was an unusual ensemble of commercial, residential and community uses in a town centre development reflecting kind of the high civic aspirations for urban renewal during the post-war period. Um, the building still combines housing and commercial space and on the ground floor and lower ground floors. And most recently, it was used as a customer service centre uh, by the council and let out afterwards as a, a standard office space, creating um, kind of a, a, a much kind of enclosed um, feel to it. It wasn't really interacting with the high street at all. Very kind of cluttered, dark space inside as well. Um, and in 2015, having just completed a mixed use development on the opposite side of Ho Street, the council were considering the long term uh, role of this building in, in the town centre. And at the time, that, um, that included demolishing the building to make space for a new development. Um, and the, the uh, regeneration team saw an opportunity uh, to temporarily activate the commercial space in that building in the meantime, and with the support of a GLA grant funding commission in our space to explore the feasibility and the type of uses that would work best at this location, and put together a business plan, so subsequently taking on a two-year lease <coughs> for this, uh, on the property following its refurbishment. There was um, strong, strong evidence that a uh, significant makeup of the local economy in Waltham Forest was in the creative sector and a growing interest from residents to find employment locally. Um, so the aim of the project was to transform the space into an affordable creative hub for um, a community of artists and artisans which will encourage links between that creative community and the rest of the community that exists in Walthamstow. And as an initial step, we ran workshops and spoke to a number of local stakeholders to understand what the community needs were and where the gaps in the current provision um, were. And we also worked with those really that are willing to work with us as well. We opened up the building, inviting the community to see the space, understand the potential, visualize how their idea could fit uh, within the practicalities of the space and give feedback on uh, the proposed mix of users we had. And this process really helped to discover potential tenants and build the local interest in the project from, from, the, from the start. 
Um, so that groundwork that was carried out locally, um, together with the practicalities of the space, informed the spatial layout, uh, which included um, very few um, amendments to the layout on the, on the lower ground floor, making space for uh, private studios and um, more alterations on the um, ground floor, accommodating a cafe um, and event space, kind of flexible space. Uh, with a kind of open plan <coughs> as well. We opened up two new kind of uh, retail frontages on the Po Street to um, use these as uh, private retail spaces. And uh, we also <coughs> created these incubator spaces, as we call them, which were uh, opening up to the cafe, to the public space, and uh, providing great visibility. Early, and they were meant for early stage startups to test ideas and use the space for up to six months before a new cohort comes into the space. Um, and uh, what's kind of important is that uh, there was a, a pricing structure for the spaces was done in a way that um, it suited businesses at a different stage of development to encourage them to um, progress and prices vary between 50 and 80 percent of market rent, uh, with the basement studio spaces or lower ground floor spaces um, at the kind of um, with the cafe and incubator spaces at the lower end of that scale, and the retail and office spaces on the ground floor at the upper end of the scale, and all all spaces were offered on flexible short-term leases with one month um, notice period and uh, no deposit requirement. <coughs> So the building was refurbished. Uh, it will define the success of a project. 
It also kind of allows for a diversity of users to, to uh, be in one space, and that improves the local offer to uh, residents and their involvement in community activities. <coughs> it supports multiple creative disciplines and businesses to co-locate, share resources, and kind of learn and collaborate. And it allows people the freedom to fail as well in order to build maturity and resilience. It allows for regeneration to go hand in hand with learning and refining in order to create um, better places that respond to the needs of the communities that they cater for. Um, apart from tenants, the space has also provided a resource for a number of events and activities, increasing community cohesion, sharing and celebration of local talent and pride, and the building in this way engages quite actively with the local community and animates the high street uh, through, the, through the week into the evening. <coughs> in the first two years, uh, the kind of the apples that have been achieved, uh, we've had 35 local startup businesses using the space, um, 16 that have used the affordable incubator spaces, there's been 75 events and activities held, and 27 new jobs created as a result. And 81% of the tenants were um, in our uh, local to the borough, and quite a big number of them reports that they uh, the project has allowed them to uh, learn new skills and improve their competence and ambition, and also um, kind of refine existing skills as well. <coughs> and what was very important for the success of the project as well is was the kind of very transparent relationship between the operator and the landlord in the case of. Uh, Walking Forest. Um, we also have the mayor coming for a visit, uh, which was quite a big event. He's uh, a big rock star, I think. Everyone likes him. Um, and the project kind of raised the local interest in the building quite a lot, uh, which seemingly was quite a forgotten building beforehand. And, um, even got Great Two listed um, this time last year, uh, prompted by the 20th Century Society. And the council, is, as a result, is currently reviewing its approach to the long term plan uh, for how they want to redevelop that estate. Um, and of course, there has been some challenges in the project. Uh, all buildings can be very difficult and costly to maintain. Um, but also, kind of the, um, the open plan of layout of the space has meant that there's been quite a lot of issues with um, the co-working space not actually attracting enough users, which then um, kind of sets back the financial model of <coughs> sustainability. Um, so the kind of spatial mix and the, the variety of users and needs uh, also impacts a lot on the management. It becomes really heavy and um, expensive to manage these spaces and manage expectations of tenants in those spaces. Um, there isn't really enough um, kind of move on space for people that have gone through the kind of incubation period um, to go into another space within the borough um, to continue what they started um, in a central grade. Uh, so that's been quite difficult. And um, also, kind of the um, operators in a lot of cases uh, are also startup uh, businesses and they also need support to kind of grow and refine the business plan and make sure the project uh, continues to be sustainable. Um, so that hasn't really been um, available as much. Um, we also did a couple of surveys before and after with the rest of the high street retailers and traders and um, there wasn't very positive kind of feedback from them that uh, they felt the project uh, helped or benefited them as well. So that kind of uh, more wider reach to those uh, businesses hasn't, hasn't really happened. Um, and uh, really a challenge is how you make the case for uh, keeping that use there because obviously there's a lot of um, kind of commercial um, pressure to and uh, pressure on, on local authorities to um, kind of be very efficient with the assets that they have and um, how do you um, provide such space for business for small local businesses and at the same time uh, not be able to kind of gain enough income from that space um, how do you how do you contract that um, 
However, the project has had um, quite a strong strategic influence in the town centre um, for further change and um, the public hall within the central area <coughs> estate uh, was also kind of improved uh, and transformed into a new performance space, um, which was given rent free to a local collective of artists and residents, and they've been kind of um, held lots of events um, for the local community at very uh, kind of affordable prices, and have reached out to uh, local education and community groups as well. And uh, the council has also worked with Mima Space on activating a former industrial building in, um, in the uh, Black Horse area, which is next to Walthamstow, into 28 affordable studio spaces for local creative businesses. And the council has acquired as well a key hub of employment space at the Harvard Town Centre in a desire to grow the local economy and sustain a thriving town centre by protecting and encouraging this kind of new creative quarter that's starting to develop. And also, um, Council has kind of quite ambitious plans to um, bring a former cinema um, into a performance venue, which also is part of uh, that kind of creative quarter that's forming up in the, the Walthamstow Town Centre. So really kind of thinking about how do we retain the portfolio of assets to uh, base our, our sustainable economy policy on. And Council has also used a similar design approach to Central Grade in repurposing a former courthouse into a temporary office for our department um, as part of its work to enrich rationalize <coughs> its assets. Um, having kind of seen some of the benefits and um, learnings from the Central Craig project, we are kind of constantly looking for new ways to use um, the land that we own and the buildings that we own more productively. And for the past year, we've been working uh, together with a local resident organization to facilitate a meanwhile use on a vacant car park site. Um, and that's kind of in an area of Walthamstow where um, it's seeing a major developments happening. Um, this is kind of Walthamstow High Street and you have St. James Street all around station here. And currently there's two developments that are being <coughs> delivered, which will bring about um, 600 new homes to the area. And this kind of car park uh, was not really, um, it wasn't being really used. Uh, it was decommissioned in early 2011 as surplus to requirements. And it kind of uh, haven't, hasn't really done anything since then. It's just been sitting on an empty land. Um, the area has been uh, a hotspot for a lot of antisocial behavior and criminal activity. It's quite badly overlooked at night. And for um, the past kind of year, we've been working with uh, a preferred operator <coughs> and investor uh, who will bring a modular business space to the car park for a period of five years, while long-term solutions are big, being developed for this site. And with this, really, we aim to kind of test the demand uh, for a number of commercial community uses which could be located in this area in the future development and kind of try to create a destination uh, which strengthens the local character and builds on local assets, but also provide a uh, new offer for the town center and new employment space for uh, local businesses to support local economic development. The project will uh, provide up to 28 workspaces to suit a range of businesses, um, primarily retail on the ground floor, uh, kind of, um, private workspaces on the back and food and beverage on the top floor uh, to kind of activate and animate the space um, kind of throughout the day and into the evening as well. And this, we've seen very overwhelming interest from um, local prospects of the space to offer opportunities for uh, them setting up a business in, um, in this area. Oh, and we kind of uh, anecdotally, we see a lot more people uh, who want to work in next to where they live. They don't want to commute to central London so much anymore. So uh, spaces like this are very valuable in um, keeping keep, keeping residents um, in our town centres and um, having people that spend time in those town centres throughout the day. And um, in a way, this project kind of seems quite um, 
uh, straightforward, you know, we have the vacant land and it's not immediately needed and does not kind of generate any positive outcomes at the moment. Uh, we have found a good investor and an operator for the site who has enthusiasm about the vision. Um, we have engaged an active community that wants to see the space transformed. Um, but at the same time, there's been quite a lot of challenges to getting where to where we are now. Um, the lease kind of disposal process the council has as well as planning and licensing um, quite lengthy uh, procedures. And when you're working with private investment, um, priorities for private investors change more rapidly. So you could kind of lose the momentum of, of that um, of that enthusiasm um, if you're not acting quicker. Uh, also, there's been kind of how do you balance the business plan and how the uh, space could work commercially with what the community aspirations for the space are, um, and uh, how do you provide affordable space but also uh, be able to um, uh, make sense for the investor to invest in that space as well. <coughs> and internally, we uh, obviously have very high uh, housing delivery targets uh, that we have to achieve from the London plan. And uh, there's always this pressure between uh, land needed housing and <coughs> land needed for employment. Um, so how, how do we um, make the case for employment uses to be um, taken into account where thinking about the future of spaces is quite important. Um, for me, I think what's valuable about these projects is that they challenge the notion of time and planning. We're very good, I think, at planning for the long term, but um, in the process of city development, uh, now also plays a very active role. And I think through meanwhile uses, we can embrace that now and uh, allow experimentation to happen. Uh, I think they offer solutions that are outcome focused and to get change happening quicker and for new users to emerge. Um, I think they allow for culture of change to develop where it's kind of okay to say we tried and we got it wrong. Um, things don't have to be perfect before they happen. And um, I think also uh, the informality of these projects um, enables stakeholders to see through different lenses and kind of allows perceptions of place to change and people get accommodated to change uh, more rapidly. And there's also been quite a shift in how um, the kind of the public authority interacts with the community and they create new opportunities for public engagement. Um, and at, at the end, you know, I think what brings character and unique energy to the projects is the people uh, and the individuals involved. And um, for me, the projects really are about uh, investing in citizens and allowing them to fail or flourish in a supported environment. And then that, in the end, um, kind of creates a better place, I think. And what, what tends to happen uh, and is that this, this constant stimulation across disciplines, which uh, is enriching for everyone involved and helps build their capacity to deal with the next project uh, they have. Um, and in terms of the future, I think there could be more kind of guidance uh, to uh, on kind of uh, maybe GLA level to support these minimum users to raise more awareness for their value and opportunities precisely uh, to landlords. And um, there should be more transparency over empty and use, underused public assets and maybe a, a kind of a, a local register that all councils can um, make public and uh, advise how people can access these spaces. Um, you should, we should use local authority and GLA land more efficiently to allow for such uses to happen and rethink how planning and licensing is applied in the case of these projects and whether any flexibilities can be, um, can be applied. Uh, I think also, as I said, uh, a lot of the operators are also startup businesses themselves so they also need some support uh, to kind of go through the different regulations and kind of statutory um, things that they have to do, but also how they make their business work um, better. And there could be stronger tax incentives uh, for such users, like when um, business rates are uh, lowered or there is a process through which those minimal users are exempt from paying business rates, for example. Um, perhaps there could be penalties for landlords that are affording space. 
and uh, not allowing it to be productively used and falling apart instead. Um, and also, I think, um, encouraging incubator and move on spaces and that concept of kind of business testing in new developments and commercial spaces in new developments. Um, usually, um, from my experience, the commercial aspect of a, a mixed-use development is the last one developers think about, and maybe there is more ways to um, for, for authorities to encourage developers to think more productively how they use that commercial space once it's there. And can they use it for local employment rather than um, getting a, a chain? In? And maybe these <coughs> negotiations can be um, uh, agreed via Section 106 agreements. And uh, I just wanted to leave you with this um, quote I quite like from the uh, former mayor of Curitiba, uh, which is kind of saying that uh, the planning of the city is a process that allows for correction. It's unproductive to, to believe that planning can be done only after every possible variable has been controlled. <laughs>